So I want to make a video with my prediction of who's going to win the US presidential election and we're going to base this base off of social skills, confidence, and social dynamics. Now I'm going to make my prediction in just a sec but what I want you to do is before I make my prediction, I'd like you to give your personal opinion of who it is that you think is going to win in the comments. Is it going to be Donald Trump? Is it going to be Kamala Harris? Is it going to be... Uh, Michael Moore, <laughs> okay, uh, the documentary guy, some random guy. Um, who's it gonna be who's going to win the US presidential election and why? I'm gonna give you my prediction. Now, by the way, I'm actually here running a free event, so make sure that you click the link below if you wanna come to the DC free event. Austin, Houston, Dallas, LA, Vegas, and Phoenix are up next right after. Click the link if you wanna come. And the reason that I'm here in DC specifically, is I personally get a lot of inspiration just being out here. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place to come and visit. Um, I'm literally gonna be posting this from my phone as soon as I finish recording, and uh, I just love the capital. I think it's freaking stunning. I really, really, really like it. So being at the capital and just being a part of this incredible, incredible uh, tradition of this incredible country, the United States, I think to myself how lucky I am to understand why it is that people are successful socially and why people are not. Why different movements build and why some movements don't. And so I was actually able to predict that Donald Trump was going to win the 2016 presidential election. I was also able to predict that he was going to lose the 2020 election. I could see that, I'm gonna break down why. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna to predict to you what it is I think is gonna happen in the election and I'm gonna tell you why well, think it? Okay, so in 2016, how do we know that Trump was going to win? Here's how. Donald Trump was the first U.S. president to win, not by just pandering to what it is that people want to hear, although he does do some of that as well, but he did it primarily using social skills. Here's the first thing that he used. Donald Trump was not somebody who said, I'm going to first be a mayor of a city, then I'm going to become a congressman, then I'm going to become a senator. He simply went down, uh, you know, the little... Uh, escalator in Trump Tower and he said, I'm going to be the president. He went right to the top. This is very, very similar to your social skills. If you're somebody who believes that you should network with the top level people, there's something in your behavior where the inner belief that you have about yourself winds up translating into the high level people that you network with. Likewise, as far as dating goes, if you know that you're someone who internally is a 10, just internally, you feel like a 10, What's gonna happen? Well, you see someone who you might feel is a 10 and you know that you're gonna attract them most likely. Why? Because you internally are a 10. So whatever it is that you believe about yourself, if you say to yourself, I'm the best, I'm number one, I'm amazing and so on and so forth, if you believe that, you're gonna carry yourself in that way and as a result, you will appear to be more presidential. Understand that during the presidential debates, the different policies that people were talking about were largely irrelevant. Nobody cared about that. Rather, human beings look at sub-communication and they look at who's the most alpha, who's the most dominant, who's the most confident, who's basically sunning the other people. Well, what you saw with Trump was he'd be talking to Jeb Bush and he'd go, oh, low energy Jeb. And then Jeb would try to keep up with Trump, but Trump wouldn't let him do it. He would just go, oh, good job. There's a little more energy, little buddy. He didn't care at all. Or he'd be talking to Ted Cruz, he'd go, lying Ted Cruz, Bible high, Bible high, and then he lies. Or he would see Kashik, and he would say, small hands Kashik, and he would just start mocking him and making fun of him. And the entire subcommunication during the debates was basically just a showcase of a man who viewed himself as a leader, a man who viewed himself better than everybody else. Nobody could pay enough attention to the policies. Nobody cared. What they looked at was who was the alpha. And as a result of that, you knew that Trump was likely to win. In addition, Trump did not try to appeal to people's logic. Rather, what he did was he went with what's called the primal, he, he basically rode what's called the primal highway. So he would say things like, build the wall, we will build the wall. And then people would say, how are we gonna afford to build the wall? And he'd say, Mexico will pay for it. And then they'd say, um, but the president of Mexico said that they're not gonna pay for the wall, Trump. And he'd go, the wall just got 10 feet higher. So there's no logical answer. He basically just passes the shit test. Likewise, if you saw Megyn Kelly and she asked him all these crazy questions and he goes, early Rosie O'Donnell. And then um, everybody would just start laughing. Nobody was paying attention to the logic at all. All that they were paying attention to was the subcommunication. So the same way when you're meeting people, they do not care if you go up and start self-qualifying. What they care about is the sub-communication. They see it in your eye contact. They see it in your voice. They see it in your control of frames. Let's look at frame control. 
if someone says Trump, the president of Mexico says he's not gonna pay for the wall. He goes, the wall just got 10 feet higher. What he basically did was he um, just laughed it off and dismissed it, which basically signals that he's the high status person. Likewise, early Rosie O'Donnell. It's like, it, but it wasn't just Rosie O'Donnell. That doesn't make any sense. It wasn't just Rosie O'Donnell. So anyone there who's engaging in logic is gonna be so frustrated because like, it wasn't just Rosie O'Donnell. She's not the only one you did this with, but he goes, early Rosie O'Donnell. And she, and Megyn Kelly says, uh, no, it wasn't. He goes, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. No, um, no acknowledgement of that at all. He's literally just passing the shit test. And that's what he did on an ongoing basis. He did not engage super logically with the other candidates. He just mocked them, <laughs> he made fun of them, clowned them, sudden them, amogged them, et cetera, et cetera. And as a result of that, people just looked at the relative status. Beautiful uh, sunset here right now in DC. Just checking this out at the monument. Love being out here. I hope that you're gonna fly in, by the way, for the free event this weekend. And make sure if you can't make this one, Austin, Dallas, Houston, LA, Phoenix, Vegas is coming up. Make sure to click the link, by the way, you wanna just attend virtually? Really, you should fly in, meet me. We're gonna all go out at night. We're gonna network. I'm gonna give you a ton of personal feedback, but if you can't make it right now, like fly in, but if you can't do it this second, you can also attend it virtually. Just click the link, click on the virtual one. We often broadcast these right off the phone. Uh, we go to the mic right to the phone. It's actually pretty awesome. You can watch it live and see all the comments. It's sick. Make sure that you get in the free tour, but ideally try to fly out here to, to DC. It's a full two day event. It's gonna be so sick, okay? Anyway, let's keep going. Now, let's look instead at the 2020 election. And how do we know that Trump was probably gonna lose? Well, the thing that basically happened is Trump, look, God bless the guy for a lot of things that he does well, but one of the things that he struggles with is he sometimes can be too approval seeking when people poke at his record. And so what'll happen is um, his opponents will deliberately misquote him and cut him out of context and he just can't help himself. He has to, to respond to it and become defensive. He just can't help it. So when he was debating Joe Biden, what you saw there was Biden would poke at him and pretty much lie about him for the most part. And Trump couldn't just laugh it off and mock him and make fun of him. Um, he kind of just looked a bit like an angry old man and was way too defensive. And so what happened also is that Trump is very, very good at appealing to his base. But the thing is, elections are not always won by the base. That's just what gets you to be the representative for the Republicans or Democrats. But what happened was he... Uh, he didn't understand that he's appealing to people at the center who don't have the context that his base has. So what would happen is um, the Democrats, uh, Biden particularly, but Kamala did it later, were just a lot better at making him look insane, make him look totally crazy. And all they have to do is simply just poke him at his record or say things that are, that are, that are false, which then makes him angry because it feels like he's being lied to. And what winds up happening is he just looks like an angry old man, very, very defensive, like, I'm the best, uh, no, it's, it's just, you're, you're lying. And so he fell in the, like, like basically he became the Megyn Kelly where he's like, but, but that's not true, you're, you're lying. He fell into the exact same trap um, that he himself was laying, okay? And that was in the 2020, uh, the whole 2020 situation. So he was not, a, he was he was very, very good appealing to his base, but was not as good at appealing to the center. Also, another thing that Trump didn't understand is the importance of personal branding as it relates to the internet. So Trump didn't realize this, but one of the main reasons that he got elected in 2016 was because he had these incredible supporters on the internet, but he didn't protect them when he was president. He didn't think that he needed to. In fact, um, I have friends that were actually very, very deep in the White House and they would tell him about this and he would just completely ignore it. And he thought that the larger narcissistic supply of Sean Hannity or Tucker Carlson on Fox News was the most important thing and he didn't go protect his followers. So as a result of that, um, many of them uh, were no longer able to post and they're too scared to defend him. So his internet presence went down and then at that point, it's simply a point of looking at numbers. How much, how many viewers does Fox News get versus how many viewers does say C CNN, MSNBC and other networks get? And the numbers didn't match up and he didn't have sufficient influence. So he wound up spending a lot of his term defending himself against Russia. He didn't get the numbers and eyeballs that he needed. Um, if you look at that, uh, look up a guy named Logan Forsyth, okay? Logan Forsyth, who I have a podcast coming out with, Logan is a master of just taking content, making multiple accounts, and just creating omnipresence by cutting up and chopping up piles of things like micro content and posting it all over the place. Um, Logan did this for uh, um, Grant Cardone, Iman Godzi, and many other people, uh, Ty Lopez, many people, and obviously those guys are wildly talented, insanely talented, but having Logan's help, 
it was inevitable that they would become super viral. They, bec they, they would achieve uh, mega viral, mega celebrity status because they used the right distribution tactics. Trump didn't do that. Um, he didn't defend his followers. He didn't use the correct distribution tactics, um, became defensive. So as a result, you could simply see that he was going to lose the 2020 election. So 2016, um, you could see he would win. 2020, you could see his he would lose, right? Because 2016, he would just lay down the frame. He would just say, these are the issues that matter, not the traditional Republican issues. These are my issues. And what happened was the other Republicans, they would buy into his frame and then they would wind up um, continually self-qualifying to Trump. No, no, but uh, we are strong on this. We are strong on that. It was just constant self-qualification. They totally blew it, right? Because they were falling in his frame. Trump does not socially ping off of other people almost ever, except when he becomes defensive. Um, so he's got this flat demeanor where he just says the thing, owns it, flat demeanor, completely believes what he's saying. You can see it in his vocal tone, vocal pitch, vocal cadence. It's obvious that he believes it, whereas other people, um, other people just didn't believe what it is they're saying and they were in reaction mode. So basically what he's using is an infield skill set that you would use in socializing and in dating and attraction and he's just using that at the debate. He's, he also go, buys into the one of one concept. He doesn't like, he, he doesn't worry that he himself looks kind of, kind of toadish. He himself doesn't worry that he's fat. He'll just start calling everybody else ugly and then they just jump into his frame, never even looking at him. Or, um, he, basically, he goes off the one-of-one one concept where his mannerisms are like, it's huge, it's amazing, it's fantastic. A lot of people would think those mannerisms are weird and they would try to dumb them down and kind of um, sort of like nerfify them. But instead, Trump's act Trump actually leans into those things. And as a result of that, he becomes one of one. So anybody, so obviously like there's a lot of people who reject his frame, but there's a lot of people who like it. Well, what's that remind you of? Anybody who understands social skills, going out, dating, attraction, so on and so forth, they understand that you want people to either love you or hate you. And so while that doesn't play well at the center, it does play very, very well. Uh, you know, if you want people to become just obsessed with you. And so that's what he does. He's a one of one, owns, the, owns his natural quirks, you know, gets everybody else on their heels while setting the frame, gets everyone self-qualified to him, doesn't acknowledge other frames, laughs it off, teases people, and just focuses on social status rather than higher, rather than logic. I mean, what do you think is going to happen when you use those social skills in your own life? It's obvious what's going to happen. You're going to smash it. Well, that's what he did. But you're also going to polarize people. And so he's also the first president that we saw massively pro uh, polarize people, which can also become divisive. Okay, so we talked about predictions. And as we're leading the prediction, I want to make my prediction for who's going to win this election. But by the way, notice how all of the different things that got him elected are things, um, as far as the social skills component, I'm not saying be divisive. I, I don't think that's always the best idea. But as far as like the social skills component, look at how you yourself could wind up becoming a US president, could wind up becoming a prime minister in your country just using, or just having a basic understanding of social skills. And then if you have a better understanding of personal brand distribution, you're gonna freaking crush it, okay? So you see you see where I'm going with this, okay? You get, you get the, look, that is so beautiful. So you get, you get the general idea of what it is that I'm saying. Okay, so now, lastly, as I'm sitting here, just enjoying the day out here in Washington, D.C., getting ready to go into my event tomorrow, which is completely free. Make sure that you click the link. Make sure that you check out, the, make sure that you get yourself to this event. Or again, like I said, Austin, Houston, Dallas, LA, Vegas, Phoenix coming up. Miami, Orlando. Make sure that you fly out and get to the event. I come out to these events because I really enjoy having fun. I'll be going out at nighttime, out in the beautiful neighborhoods to go out in DC, bringing out the people that came. It's gonna be such a fun time. A lot of bonding, networking, it's gonna be great. I'm sitting out here just enjoying a day of my life. I'm gonna make my prediction of what's gonna happen. I predict that Donald Trump is going to win again. And I think he'll win this one because he has had a better social media strategy. He crushed the Andrew Schultz interview. He's probably getting ready to crush the Joe Rogan interview. I believe that he is. He's getting ready to crush that. His distribution is phenomenal and he's been taking massive action. I believe that what he has going against him is mail-in balloting. I believe that what he has going against him is a bad debate performance. I believe that J.D. Vance, however, crushed Tim Waltz. So that is potentially uh, kind of balancing it out. Funny enough, the, uh, JD, the, the Waltz versus Vance debate was actually what a presidential debate should have looked like. It's like, could this just be the normal debate? The, the normal debate? Um, but Vance did edge out Waltz for sure. Um, I, think that's a, I think that that's a hot advantage. 
And I just think the social media strategy overall is better. Apparently, uh, Baron Trump has actually been the one uh, promoting his father, you know, to go and to go ahead and uh, to go ahead and do a uh, more social media strategy. Okay, so that's going to be my prediction. I believe that. Um, I personally think that the better uh, better use of social media, uh, putting himself out there, getting on a big podcast, having simply a more active and engaged uh, run, as opposed to Kamal, who's largely hidden, will. Um, oh, also the JD Vance thing. I believe that that will probably outdo uh, mail-in mail-in ballots, as well as um, the uh, just the fact that he uh, is a little bit too polarizing for the center and also had a bad debate. Uh, performance, dude is just too easy to bait into a bad debate. It's it's just it's just crazy how it works. It's, it's a shame to see if he's just unable to figure that out. Okay, so that's my prediction. Let me know yours, and I'm just gonna kind of roll out of here. Just uh, I'm gonna catch a couple quick shots. Gonna uh, review some of those uh, interesting topics that we made about social skills. By the way, I'm gonna post this right off my phone. Tell me how you like this. I actually thought it, I actually thought it'd be kind of fun uh, just to make a video right directly off my phone. I've actually got a mic uh, plugged in the phone, like so. I have a Sennheiser nice mic just plugged in the phone right here. So I'm gonna actually do an experiment with just um, recording this and then just posting it. But anyway, beautiful night. Just, it makes me so happy just seeing people out, people just having fun, people touring around. A lot of fun, I just been I like being on the road. Can't wait to see you here in DC if you're flying in. Can't wait to see you. Um, last couple points though that I wanna make. Okay, so what I just talked to you about is probably even a little more significant than you realize. Reason for here, guys. Uh, I can't. It's a little bit more significant than you realize because don't underestimate the fact that the base level social skills uh, that you've been learning for years got a US president elected. And realize too that even the speechwriters for Trump um, had a background in advanced social skills, uh, a deep one, <laughs> to say the least. So it's pretty wild that that actually happened. Like, you know, you're a part of a community about social skills and then you literally just observed a president, the most famous person in the world, basically take social skills and uh, look at the beautiful yellow leaves out. Uh, take those social skills and use it to become a president. Here's what you don't realize. Like, if you actually took the exact same skills that we teach you, vocal projection, frame control, uh, how to pass shit tests, how to be one of one, how to set the frame, you're not seeing this, you're, you're thinking too limited. At minimum, you could build a multi-million dollar personal brand but you could also become a US president. You could become a leader of a country. I'm telling you, you have no idea how many huge, huge leaders have learned social skills from this content. People that are mega famous, richest in the world, super powerful, and they've used this. Meanwhile, you see dipshits like, you didn't really work? <laughs> Come on, man. Be a little bit more ambitious. Look at the content for what it is, not whatever weird emotions and limitations that you have around it. Actually start stepping up. You apply this stuff. Sky's the fucking limit. Anyway, heading on into DC. Let me know your prediction of who's gonna win. I wanna know. I wanna know why. I wanna know what it is that you're seeing. And also, you might even, if you wanna be a little bit controversial, do another thing. Let me know who you'd prefer to see win. And um, I love Republicans and I love Democrats. I love everybody. I wanna do business with everybody. I wanna coach everybody. And uh, I'd like to know your thoughts and just do me one last favor, don't be tribalistic and uh, don't put in the, uh, and don't attack each other in the comments. You know, if someone likes Kamala Harris, you don't need to say she's a communist. Someone's a Trump guy, you don't need to say he's gonna be a dictator. You know, if, that, if it happens, it happens. I guess next term you can say, ha ha, I told you, but um, just respect each other. You know, the whole point of politics uh, is the idea that each side makes their case, right? Each side picks their person, makes their case, um, it has to persuade, right? And so that's the problem is when people start attacking each other over politics, um, they're not engaging in a debate, in a healthy debate, in a healthy discussion and persuasion skills. You know, like when people try to uh, shoot Trump as an example, it's like, yo, win by debate. Like, don't try to silence your opposition. The First Amendment exists so that people can actually have a debate and also so that people that are fucking have a lot of weird opinions can be uncovered and because uh, sunlight's the best disinfectant. So you can actually see, okay, this person has a weird opinion, well, we can debate it, okay? Um, we should assume that people are adult enough to have an adult level debate. And so that's the idea of politics, that people have a debate. And a lot of time too, um, rather than entrenching yourself in a political position, you can actually be open-minded to the other person. Like if someone says, hey, they like Kamala, or they like Trump, and they say why in the comments, maybe just have a little look at 
what it is uh, that they like. You know, why do, why do they like uh, the person who they like? Or maybe somebody else. I know a lot of people like RFK Jr. I like him a lot too, especially on his health stuff. He's really strong on health stuff. So that could be another thing too. Anyway, let me know also how you like the uh, video, which is basically being posted like almost in real time. Let me know if you like this format. And uh, if you like it, we could do it again. Let me know your thoughts on who your predict's gonna win and why, who you hope will win and why. And I'll see you out here in DC this weekend if you're coming out or at a future event. They're all free. Excited to see you. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.